Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. So, guys, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out the one we put up on Evolutionary Energy Arts, uh, which we try to get a video up there. We're going to try to do one there every other day and try to get one or two up on EE Arts every day. Um, so they're going to go together, Evolutionary, um, because it's demonized, will be a little bit more explicit there. Um, as I've shared with you guys, we were on BitChute, and we haven't been able to post a BitChute. Uh, Cindy got from the guides that BitChute is completely under control of the powers that be. And Brightian as well, unfortunately. It feels like has come under some sort of control. Um, things just don't feel the same there anymore. And uh, we will look into other sources as well as we've talked about and now that we're going to be able to root ourselves a little bit more and and focus a little bit more, develop some more energy uh, to go out there and, and get a lot more done in the future, I want to put pieces together for people to, to just bring bits and pieces of information and say, check this out. Now, check out that. And, you know, you guys do it to us all day long, too. <laughs> you know, if we watched every video that was recommended by family mem members every day, uh, we would need a staff of a, a thousand to cover all the videos because mm -hmm. there's just not enough time in the day. And I know there's a lot of great info out there and a lot of people are really uncovering things. You know, after all, this is the great apocalypse, right? It's the great unveiling. We're, we're seeing the man behind the curtain. Many of us are for what it really is. Well, yeah, you know, and psychically it's interesting because we are picking up when we do have a chance to watch, you know, something that somebody recommends to us. It's like we've already covered it or we're picking up on it. So it is, it's the great unveiling. A lot of us are coming awake to this. And I think that's what makes us curious. That's what makes our soul kind of say, hey, watch this, watch this. This is good stuff. You know, it's our DNA waking up. Yeah, we, and we have stuff that we've gotten that we haven't um, shared yet. And some of it is, is going to be really um, probably pretty controversial for some. And, you know, um, for some, I'm sure it will be stuff that they won't want to hear. Um, and then for others, it'll be stuff that they do want to hear uh, as well, getting into topics like clones and uh, mm -hmm. JFK Jr., Oh, boy, that's a big one. White hat, black hat, and yep. all this. Those are uh, sensitive ones. They are sensitive ones. Oh, and, wow. and but then, you know, this, and let me just say thank you, Deborah. This is a, a, a good one to share, and she shared with us. Um, but I was having a discussion with one of our family members I've known for years now and said to her, I laid some things out in a certain way, and she was like, you know, I didn't think, ever think about it from that angle. And that's exactly what we need to do uh, with each other, you know, share, keep sharing, keep sharing what you're learning. So, yes, BlackRock's home buying spree should concern you. OK, the general public doesn't normally look into companies like BlackRock, the largest asset management firm on the planet with over nine trillion, nine trillion in assets. That's higher than the GDP of every nation in the world other than the U.S. and China. That's it. Every other nation, the assets are less than this corporation. And again, as I've said, this is a corporate world, guys. It's a corporate world. When you look to I-G-F-A-R-B-E-N and look at how that company profited from WW2, look to certain families like, you know, there's a famous line of baked beans that come you know, from a certain family. Well, there's another family by that name that's been involved in politics that had a huge stake and made huge profits off of WW2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look deeper, guys. So we don't normally look into them because they're invisible to normies like us. They don't advertise or have their name on a sports stadium like other major companies. They're happy to to stay as under the radar as possible for a company to be so huge. But some in the general public are paying attention now following the resurgence of an April Wall Street Journal article 
that chronicles BlackRock and other money institutions buying up single-family homes as quickly as they can at rates higher than the average home buyer is willing to pay. They're buying them up at a premium, and that should concern everyone, whether you're in the market to buy or a home or not. And so this this is out on many, many different websites that tend to have a little more slant to the right. And then there's others that have come out and right away tried to um, discredit this. And that tells you something right there. And of course, when you have certain, well, certain publications, you know, internet sites that are even more than dubious, uh, you know, trying to discredit something, it tells you that there's a lot of truth here. A lot of truth here, right? So let's talk about the non-conspiratorial issues in play first. This will have three instant effects on the market and economy. First, it's already making it harder for a scarce market for home buyers to make a purchase. Second, it's driving up prices in a self-replicating fashion. The more BlackRock and others overpay for homes, the higher home prices will go. Lastly, but certainly not least, they're causing a shift from home ownership to renting which degrades the economy for lower and middle class folks while limiting their upward financial mobility. That's a big one. Now let's get more conspiratorial. And when I use the phrase conspiracy theory, I'm not using it as a pejorative. If 2020 and 2021 have taught us anything, it's that we need to take the big C words seriously because they're happening right in front of our eyes. As you see a, a Twitter tweet here, BlackRock is buying every single family house they can find paying 20 to 50 percent above asking you know we got the impression and we had to fight claw and nail hand and tooth we had to um, go on the attack as much as we can as much as we could to to in our process you know of, of trying to find a place going to the manager of the manager of the manager and not only that, but even going out and talking to com companies that were uh, subcontractors doing business in the whole procedure to get it done because they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. We know they didn't want to do it. And we called it out on them and even said this feels like it's just simply they don't want to do it. Um, then things changed and they got nervous. But I think a lot of other people are getting the same thing. We're feeling that from other people that have had all sorts of issues trying to find a house, trying to find a property in these times. They feel like it's like the, the banks don't want to lend to you. And there's a reason here. There's a big reason here. Think about what we see going on. Put, start putting all these little pieces together. This came out, the World Economic Forum, we talked about this. You're going to own nothing and you're going to be happy about it. That's the vision for humanity in the year 2030. And we've also gotten from the guides that that year 2030 is the year it all kind of really collapses for them. They're not going to be able to hang on at that point. So we have to hang on till that point. Um, and I know there's a lot of you out there that are listening to things and you have great hopes for August. Uh, for instance, you know, there was many people that, that had a lot of hope. Uh, for January and, and, you know, for different outcome in November. And so, you know, we'll start, many people will look forward to 2022 and then 2024 in November again. And, and March was another one too. So yeah. It's like every month there's something. Remember all the hope for March and, yeah. you know, we had so many family members saying, well, we'll see what happens in March. Well, we'll see what happens in March. Yeah. You know, and it didn't manifest doesn't mean that things aren't going to manifest uh, later on. There's a bigger, bigger play going on here. This is completely 100% scripture. <laughs> and the key there is the script as we watch this all play out. So, you know, this, this was right here, a, a big statement, no ownership. You'll own nothing and you're going to be happy. And, you know, of course, here we see the name Klaus Schwab, the WEC, the World Economic Forum, their vision. And, you know, of course, there's so many powers and it, it's big corporate powers again 
that are in play here. And what are the corporate powers? Well, you know, they're really, it, it boils down to the few that control everything with the many controlling hardly anything and soon to be nothing if there's a certain vision that comes. We've covered this, and this this is buzzing big time about how you know Gil Bates is America's biggest farmer. 269,000 acres of farmland, which is visible from space, right? Everybody's talking about this every single day now as his you know marriage goes up in flames. And you know, those that we see. Uh, you know, they're not the real powers that be. You know, they, these are the people that are willing to uh, S-E-L-L-O-U-T humanity in order to, you know, have their lives of lu luxury and abundance and opulence. Yet they're not really the, they're not the ones with the puppet strings. They're the ones that are attached to the puppet strings. And of course, the politicians are attached as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's just something that they'll, they're going to do. And this is why it's so important for us to understand that we need to put ourselves first. We need to not give too much credence to these beings that say, oh, we're going to take care of you. You're going to be okay. Don't worry. We're in control. We got this. Oh, no, 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 no. They've used that over and over and over to take advantage of situations. We need to take care of ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Don't rely on, on Big Brother to take care of you. So as we start to put these together, you know, home buying spree by a nine trillion dollar management uh, asset management company. The fact that the WEC says you're going to own nothing and be happy about it in 2030. That's the great vision of the Great Reset as as the wealth is constantly getting put in one direction. You know, the farmland being bought up by very, very large, well-known names. And we see here billionaires got 54% richer during the leg upon the land, right? Sparking calls for a wealth tax, you know, sparking calls for more management of the system by the powers that be. That's the last thing we need. It needs to be broken down into smaller pieces. Again, a one world order can control everything. If we broke it down to the town level, to the county level, ooh, it's going to be a lot harder to control everybody. It has to be broken down before it can be, you know, fixed. And really, there's no fixing this system. So if you're holding out hope for any one particular person that we know about already on the scene to go ahead and give us a new a new lease on life, then you're holding out hope in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. This has to be done by everybody. We have to awaken the entire planet. We need to get that 51% of the planet awakened so that we recognize that, you know what? We're not gonna keep revamping the old system. We need an entirely new way of doing things. And here we see one shocking chart that has farmers trembling with fear and it's this one right here, which if, if I go over here to bring it up for you guys, look at the top left. This is this is June 2021 and the red is drought. Just look at 2020 and then 2019. You could you could see how the change has gone on. The West and parts of the North are under severe drought. Uh, Michael in Michigan, hello there, brother. He was saying, please send rain. I said, will do. And uh, then he texted back about two hours later saying, hey, it's starting to rain. Uh, not that we did it, but we can do it mm -hmm. if we all get together. We got to get together. We know we've seen declassified documents. China has come straight out and said they, they control the weather. You know, Russia as well. And, and of course, there's tons of declassified documents here in the U.S. as well. Interestingly enough, going back to uh, times that start out with the numbers one and eight, you know, talking about weather control, like 1890s, you know, pre-World War II and World War I even, talking about, you know, cloud seeding and the ability to control weather. And so, you know, as we had said before, why couldn't we build pipelines going all across the country? You know, and, and many have uh, been watching what's going on with the Hoover Dam. And I said to a family member today, um, yeah, I would be concerned if I was in Vegas to Phoenix. 
uh, because what we saw happen in Texas, a little artificial flavoring, that super, super cold snap that was just in insane. It wasn't just Texas either. As we know, it was Oklahoma, it was Louisiana, it was Arkansas, it was Kansas. Um, we're going to have the inverse of that situation coming. So be prepared for that. As you see, looming heat wave could push Phoenix and Vegas temps to 115 or higher. And what if there's no grit? I've been there, you know, pumping gas in Phoenix in like 118 degrees. And it's brutal. And I can't imagine elderly or people with health issues surviving without AC. I just can't believe, you know, it would be horrible. It would be the exact opposite of what we saw. And they, you know, at first they downgraded the amount of deaths from that cold snap. And uh, then we learned that it's more people died during that cold snap than did in all the hurricanes and probably the hurricanes and tornadoes last year as well. Cold could be deadly. Oh, very deadly. You know, cold and heat waves. I think those are overlooked as, um, you know, things that can really do a lot of damage. People do tend to think about rainstorms and tornadoes, hurricanes, but heat waves and cold waves. Oh, yeah. PG&E, uh, that's, you know, again, a company that's owned by a certain family. R-O-T-H, Shields, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, they're warning of more blackouts as California wildfire season begins. And yeah, they're actually also saying, you know, besides the fact that it's already extreme drought, the weather conditions could result in more rolling blackouts this year than last year. And that's a tendency. It's not good. It's definitely not a good situation. It's time for all of us to put our intention out there. And, you know, perhaps the only thing that will stop the insanity is when the sun sneezes yeah. and the technology goes bye bye. Northern California underwater shortage. And as you see, there's going to be rationing. Farmers warn water is unnecessarily let out to the sea. You know, it's funny how these things always happen. How when we saw the great plague upon the land, all the chickens being buried alive and ducks and all the livestock. And of course, we've had all sorts of, you know, we have a million different bird flus out there, all these different combinations. We saw half the uh, pig herd in China, which China actually eats the most pork, uh, culled. It's an all too perfect storm that we see going on as the food supply is dwindling, 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 dwindling. Not only the food, the water, and our good friend and uh, brother, David, David Devine, at 2030, um, he, can, he did a video the other day talking about, you know what's going to be the number one thing to farm in the future? It's water, you know? And, and that was, you know, very, very good point to point out. It's most certainly if things continue like this in the West and it's going across the Northern tier, they're talking about another dust bowl. And meanwhile, you have the Hoover Dam you know, servicing so many, so many people right there in desert land that would not be survivable normally. It's drying up. It's drying up. Historically low levels. We're we're going back to dust bowl times here. So it's it's hang on tight, guys, because you know, as we've said, this perfect storm, it, it's it's hitting everything at the same time. It's just you know, it's it's like a it's watching a masterful conductor who's got this big orchestra out there. And now he's pointing to the, you know, he's pointing to the different sections that make up the orchestra. And so when we're looking at him pointing over here to transportation, we've seen issue after, after issue there. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you know, the farming, yes, the drought. The overabundance of water in some areas flooding away farmlands. The record cold that comes in. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, many people did plant early and then had record cold that came down and, you know, did damage and then would have to plant again. We've seen so many things attacking the food supply from GMO seeds. We, we've all heard horror stories about how the GMM, GMO crops have infiltrated and damaged others. And then we have the shipping issue. Peak shipping season is ahead. 
and the parking lot of container ships moored off the U.S. West Coast, it's worsening. It's continuing to worsen. The epicenter of congestion based around L.A., Long Beach. Yep. On the other side of the Pacific, southern China, a surge in you know, plague upon the land has caused some of the biggest port congestion in more than a year as well. So you have that going on. Of course, we had that Mississippi Bridge that was you know, interestingly damaged with pylon cut there or whatever it was, mm -hmm. uh, causing a backlog of hundreds of barges. We saw you know, the canal, the Suez Canal, get blocked off by a ship. Just happens to go perfectly sideways, block the whole damn thing down. One thing after another after another. And, of course, the building supplies. You know, we've, we've talked to family members that were looking for places that maybe, you know, they could only afford to find something that they could gut. But now the lumber costs are six times or more. So, you know, scrap that plan. And then we see the asset company is buying up houses left and right, just as Gil Bates buying up the farmland left and right. And the WEC telling us, you're going to own nothing, and boy, it's going to be a blessing for you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we got you. Meanwhile, the Iranian Navy ship in Atlantic reportedly carrying fuel alongside armaments for Venezuela. Uh, interesting, too, because there was a comment that came out uh, yesterday from a certain po political... Um, entity, which many would know, uh, which you could probably look up, uh, just basically saying, what will Joe do about the Venezuela situation? What will Joe do? And making reference to Texas and the border. Mm -hmm. And we know, of course, you know, how many, how many sleeper think, you know, the little small units that make up our bodies are in place that have come over through the border, you know, it, it, and it's been going on for generations, you know, they've been here a long time. Cindy's got that, gotten from the guides that there are um, those in place that have been ready to go for over a generation. Oh, they're embedded and they're ready, you know, they've been trained and they've had time to accumulate what they need to accumulate and get done whatever they need to get done. So preparation is what they're really good at. But recognize again, the puppet masters control all the puppets and we see the puppets. We, we don't really see the puppet masters. Even when we're talking about these ROTH uh, childs out there and, and such, there's still those above that you don't see. Well, because for one, it would probably terrify you if you did see them. Boris Yeltsin has an entourage, or had an entourage, of hundreds of CIA agents who instructed him on how to run Russia, claims former parliamentary speaker. What? What? The first Russian president, Boris Yeltsin, was surrounded by hundreds of CIA agents who told him what to do throughout his tenure as leader. That's according to Russian Kaz Bulatov, the former chairman of Russia's parliament. Speaking to a radio station, he claimed Russians, uh, Russian President Yeltsin's entourage was full of Americans. In 1991, he was elected to his leadership post with Washington's help. It has been alleged and is still not yet known to what extent the U.S. remained the voice in the ear throughout his presidency. They must have been hundreds of CIA employees, he said. They determined everything. He also added that after winning the presidential election, Yeltsin would send security officials and heads, heads of departments to the U.S. so the Americans could examine them and give, a, give conclusions. So isn't this interesting? Isn't this interesting? I mean, the stuff that's coming out nowadays about the reality, the interconnectedness, um, because the reality is, you know, that there are, well, we have seen that there's going to be in certain parts of this country you will see troops from the fine dining country working with the country we we're just talking about and with u.s troops manning certain well well when you uh, go out into nature you know you might go out to nature and you might enjoy a certain trip, a camping trip, mm -hmm. right? So they will be manning certain, I think you guys could put it together. 
Soviet collapse taught Russians the danger of being a messianic superpower. JV makes it clear America hasn't learned the lesson. Um, this is just interesting. When you and again, this is our RT, as is the last one. When you know that the puppet masters control the opposing sides in, in the bigger scheme of things, then look at the rhetoric that comes out from both sides. And this is actually getting into talking about Christianity too. And, you know, there's been some prophecies, some Catholic prophecies that talk about Russia be becoming the savior country. And I know um, some of you guys have mentioned that in the past, and I've been familiar going back to the 80s about that. But the reality is um, we haven't seen a true version of Christianity on this planet since Yeshua walked the planet. Well, we could probably say there was probably up until about 325 AD when the pagan emperor Constantine had his vision and was told to conquer in, in the sign, under the sign of the cross and gave us the official version, which you know ended up causing massive scroll and book burnings. Think about the wisdom that was lost in the Library of Alexandria and then ask yourself truly, how can you trust anything that's given to us? Uh, by the mainstream. And, you know, would you trust ABC, CBS, MSN, Fox, you know, any of these? Would you trust any of these? Then, then why are you trusting the official mm -hmm. script? It doesn't make any sense to me. Look to what has been burned. Look to what has been lost. Look to the groups that were persecuted, like the Gnostics, the Cathar, Cathars as well. Um, so many different people that were persecuted as the official versions came around and look to, you know, 1871 and the bigger script of things, how fanatics took over the world. Well, yeah, fanatics do run the world. And unfortunately, they point the finger at the people that are waking up from their zombified sleep and call those people fanatics when it's really the fanatics that have been running the show the whole time. Mm -hmm. This is this is the upside down part of the world. Half of young adults think one night stands will be a thing of the past after a pandemic ends, thanks to virtual intimacy. And many people are just, they're not looking to start families. They're maybe not even looking to have relationships anymore of any sort of substance. And a lot of it can be due uh, to many different factors, including some stuff that we were talking about in the video on evolutionary today. There's a lot of different frequencies out there. There's a lot of different things that you might be inhaling or drinking or might be entering via other methods into your body. Um, males, you know, we're drinking out of plastics for decades now, and our sperm rates have dropped 60% you know, estrogen producing plastics. It, it's just, again, it's another perfect storm that's leading to the decline of Homo sapiens sapiens. And again, as I've pointed out before so many times, what really did happen to the Denisovans, Neanderthals, Cro-Magnon, and all the other uh, pre-Homo sapiens sapiens that were on the planet and then disappeared. And yeah, we do have Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA in us. Um, but as a whole, those species have apparently disappeared unless they've gone inside or, or out somewhere else, perhaps. I don't know, unless that they were just controlled to death. Yes, interesting too. I, you know, we will touch on a lot of these things in upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much for being part of the family. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, thumbs up if you did enjoy the content and thought it thought-provoking. Share your comments. Let us know what you guys are thinking. And share, share, share the videos, too, as we try to awaken people. That's the biggest thing. Getting to the point where we get the majority awake. And that you know is a race against the clock right now. If you guys need to make an appointment, it's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail or eearts at protonmail.com. God bless and namaste. Namaste.